What is up, everybody? We are now live here on the Bateman Show. I'm actually at my house this week, and going to have a couple guests. Uh, I'm going to have a guest on the show. Uh, go ahead and make a comment below to make sure I can see your comments. Uh, say hi or something because I've been having a problem uh, with the comments not working. All right, there we go. I see Chad Pfeiffer is in here. Uh, let me make sure I can scroll over to my friends because I'm going to have to invite uh, Ronnie Moore here eventually. Um, so got a lot of cool things going on this show. Uh, i got to make a couple quick announcements. Uh, jerk bait show, we're going to talk after uh, Ronnie gets on here about jerk baits and, and stuff like that. Uh, Brooks is here um, at the house. One thing you're going to notice different in this show at this new place uh there's no more beeping so you're not going to hear the smoke detector the alarm any of that stuff well all that's all that's fixed so what's going on everybody uh, i gotta figure out how i can get ronnie in here uh send him a text but uh i'm gonna go ahead and go and make a couple announcements what's up brian crawford uh the first big announcement and i've been holding this back for uh quite a while no it's actually red spanky i am going to be running the ronald uh mcdonald charity tournament on kentucky lake which is an absolute huge charity tournament they asked me to be tournament director of uh, this fall um, this is the biggest charity charity tournament pro co or let's say pro co uh pro-am tournament on the lake and all the money all the proceeds uh, is gone to raise for Ronald McDonald Children's House. And if you don't know what they do, they basically put up uh, families and children uh, in times of emergency medical needs. Uh, you know, it's expensive, and they donate money for that. They give them a place to live, a place to stay in, everything. Uh, some of these families are in there for a long period of time. So when you're at McDonald's and you throw your change in there for RMCH, uh, that's what that goes to. Well, they've had a charity tournament on Kentucky Lake for about 20 years, mm -hmm. and Michael Love, and they have always put that on. They give so much back to the fishing community. Uh, they own the McDonald's that, you know, unfortunately uh, caught on fire a couple weeks ago. Really feel bad for them. But they're going to be able to rebuild. But this tournament, I want to make awesome. And I'll be sending out angler invites this week. Uh, hopefully some of you guys on here, the Kentucky Lake uh, area, would love to join me. You'd basically be taking some guys fishing that are from corporate, from McDonald's. It's all about having a good time and raising money uh, for Ronald McDonald Children House. Uh, it's a big deal. And, uh, whoop. and also, you know, got a little different setup tonight than usual, but also... Uh, any people that are, uh, any vendors or, Brooks, calm down. Any vendors or sponsors, uh, definitely taking any kind of donations. We have a silent auction the night before, and that money goes to, just stop, please, just a second. Uh -huh. Got to calm Brooks down. All that money goes on the silent auction, goes directly, directly to the Ronald McDonald Charity House, Lots of cool stuff. I know Shimano uh, has already said they'll do it. Uh, so if you're connected with any companies at all, love to get your stuff coming in. And we're going to sell an auction this stuff out and raise a lot of money for the Ronald McDonald Children's House. Um, the tournament is June 2nd uh, on Kentucky Lake, right after the Triton Owners Tournament out of the North End. It's kind of invite only. But I will be sending plenty of invites, even to some new anglers. If you're a Costa Pro, FLW Pro, and you want to attend, I definitely appreciate it. Um, it's going to be awesome, man. And I'm really blessed they asked me because I've fished it uh, several years. I've done good a couple times. It's not about how good you do. Uh, you will be cons uh, You will be co-op some money. Uh, for taking some guys fishing it's not a lot most guys donate it back i do but it's fun you're going to take some guys that just want to go have a good time and they're donating their time and their money to help out ronald mcdonald foundation and i 
maybe we can set something up and we'll make a huge bait man donation as well to go with everything else i'll throw in some money maybe one night we'll all pull in if everybody that watches this video I'll put a dollar man we could we could put a 15 200 or 1500 or 2000 dollar check and put it in their pockets and that would be really really good so let you know local guys if you get an invite uh, it's going to come for me. Look for that the next week. I definitely want to see you guys there. I understand guys got tournament schedules and whatnot, but the participation's been a little low. I want to get that up. Let's make this tournament great again. So, Now, second uh, announcement. Uh, you'll see at the end of this video tonight, there will be a giveaway. And the giveaways the next couple of weeks are going to be brought to you by Angler Hub. And really excited to work with Tanner Purdy and Angler Hub. Uh, they're going to, to uh, sponsor the giveaways uh, for next couple weeks. Uh, do me a favor, download the Angler Hub app if you haven't. Uh, it's a tournament management system. The Angler Hub app is free. Uh, it shows tournaments, uh, results. Uh, what else does it do? Uh, there's all kinds of articles on there. Uh, it's really big in Oklahoma, the Texas area, but we need to start adding tournaments in Kentucky Lake, Tennessee, everywhere. Uh, I'm going to add the Ron McDonald tournament on there, BFL results. You can get all this at one spot. So when people ask you, hey, what kind of tournaments are going on in Kentucky Lake this week, you could say, well, let me pull up Angler Hub. Oh, there's a tournament out of Paris. There's a tournament out of Moores uh, here, here, and here. And the next day, you can upload the results there. They also have another app called SpotSafe, which is my favorite. Uh, it's a waypoint management system app, and you can get it for Android or iOS. It's $14.99, and you can put waypoints in on your cell phone. You can import them from your Lowrance or Hummingbird unit. You can also export them from your cell phone to your units. Uh, one suggestion I will tell you, make sure you back your stuff up. Uh, you back up Angler Hub if you lose your phone the next time you download it. What's up, Brooks? You got to be careful. This table's shaky. Next time you download it, you'll have all your information. If you want to send waypoints, like I can send waypoints to my partner, Jeff Defue, and I can lock them. So the only person that can uh, see them is Jeff. So if Jeff decided he was going to send some uh, waypoints to somebody else, it would not let him. So that's a really cool uh, feature. It uses Google Maps. You can also go in to spot save. You can add photos of the fishing catch, uh, water temperature, water color, what kind of structure it's on what kind of bait it's just a do-it-all app so do me a favor i download spot safe it's $14.99 i'm going to be giving away a couple promo codes in the next couple weeks for some free downloads uh, nathan angler hub is free uh, you can download that and then they also make spot safe which is $14.99 tuned in late what tournament are you going to talk about and are you going to post it that is the ronald mcdonald charity house tournament andy and i will definitely post about it so I'm going to try to figure out how to get my buddy Ronnie Moore on here. And we're going to talk about uh, the upcoming Elite Series and everything. Uh, I've got to go through here and send an invite. Here he is. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, it says Ronnie can't, can't bring Ronnie on it this time. Uh-oh. This is not good. What is going on? Says they can't, I can't bring Ronnie Moore on. Well, Ronnie Moore, I don't know why I can't invite anybody on here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to go through here. I know everybody wants to see Ronnie Moore. This is not good. Let me see if I can invite anybody on here. Uh, Ronnie's probably going to have to make his, uh, I'll tell you how, why well, I can't. Uh, Ronnie, if you're watching this, uh, you'll have to make, uh, your regular Facebook page, uh, that you're getting on here. You're going to have to set that to public because if it's not public, it won't broadcast on here. So while we're waiting for, uh, Ronnie, I'll show you a couple really cool things. I'll let Ronnie get that set up. So hopefully he's watching. Ronnie, just had to set your personal uh, to public, your profile to public, and then I should be able to send you an invite. Should have told you that earlier. I didn't realize that. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. So I got a couple new baits in, new colors. Guys, been really excited about. You know, I love accent spinner baits. Y'all know I love purple. 
Check this right here out. This is the new uh, Purple Crush uh, from Accent Fishing Products. Uh, this is the Double Willow River Special, and I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, they listen to me, and I tell them, dude, if y'all make this, we'll sell tons of them. This color is totally awesome. Uh, you can tell that's like a table rock shad, very close to the Purple Freak that I always talk about. That is now on TackleFreaks.com. I put it on there not too long ago. Yeah. And I've also got that bait available in the really famous accent yeah. turtle blades, which is hot. my son's about to throw a fit. So if y'all want to see someone get a belt, it's probably going to happen. Uh, that right there is the famous turtle blades. Uh, this one's three eighths ounce. Uh, one of my favorite shallow water spinner baits right there. These sell really, really well on tacklefreaks.com. Uh, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and do me a favor. Give me a give me a nice share on there so we can get more people in on the feed. I'll keep checking on Ronnie Morse see if we can get Ronnie in here. Uh, let's see what is going on. That is the River Special, Tommy Blakely. Uh, the new color, Purple Crush. That's an exclusive to us right now. I got plenty of them. I can ship them all out tomorrow. They're on TackleFreaks.com. Do me a favor again. Make sure you like the video. Give it a share. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try to get Ronnie on here one more time. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I can get everybody but Ronnie Moore on here. This is crazy. What's up, David? Guys, I apologize for the technical difficulties. I should have worked this out this week. Uh, I want to show you also a really cool bait that uh, I paid a lot of money for. I paid like, uh, Ronnie just texted me. Hmm. Whoa. Uh, Ronnie, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'd like to reply to your text, but I'm on the live video. We're trying to, I'm gonna to try to get this on here real quick. Huh. It will not do it. Ronnie, I don't know why it's not letting you join my broadcast. That's crazy. Huh. All right. Maybe I'll figure something out here in just a little bit. Uh, I'm really sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to go into this no zach it's not just him there's about i don't know 15 or so people like i can't send a request to terry brown uh, i can't send one to ronnie moore uh, there's several guys on here i can't but i can bring other people in i'm not sure why it's acting like that um ronnie i don't think i can send the invite to the journalism page what it does is it lets me scroll right or left and to add people on here and it has a little plus thing but unfortunately it's not up by your name this has just been an absolute cluster but the show must go on guys and i'm sorry uh we'll try to get ronnie in here tonight we're not gonna give up so hey check out this bait this is the battle shad from working class zero and if you like to imitate big gizzard shad like me, I'm really excited about this bait right here. This is all custom pour uh, from California. Working Class Zero makes it. Uh, this is meant for a 10 aught owner beast tuck. Uh, I'm, dude, this thing is awesome. These are really hard to get, and I paid like 40 bucks for this one. And uh, it's even missing the eye, so that should tell you uh, the demand on these things. Um, this is an awesome swim bait. Can't wait to throw it. Water's gonna have to warm up. If it imitates a big gizzard, you know the bait man's gonna have one. Uh, I really need about three or four. You have to join the Working Class Zero Facebook and Instagram pages, see when they pour these, and they go really quick. I think the normal retail is about 20 bucks on these. Um, but uh, I bought this one used, believe it or not. No teeth marks. Uh, I forgot what color this is, but this is awesome. Big giant boot tail on it. Um, that is the Working Class Zero Battle Shad. Been meaning to show you guys this for a long time. And it has a little pocket right here. Uh, this is where your hook goes in. And you got one on the bottom. Super awesome. 
I'm going to catch Jane on this thing. I'm thinking even a, a double digit. Ronnie Morris is try now. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. David Newcomb. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Dang. It still won't let me, Ronnie. I have no clue what's going on. I have no clue what's going on in this thing. Anyway, Ronnie, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm usually pretty up to top on this stuff. So I want to talk jerk baits, but I really want Ronnie to get on here. Um, let's see what else I can do here. Video only mode, no. Why isn't it not letting me add Ronnie Moore? Hmm. You gotta be on, also you gotta be on a mobile phone too. Uh, let's see, Ronnie, maybe if you would try getting on under your wife's name, who is a lovely young lady, now I want to let y'all know, Ronnie's wife sent me this Bassmaster Classic hat. I actually won a contest on Twitter, and she sent it to me. What a sweetheart. It's my first Classic, and I answered a question, and she sent me this. So I'll probably wear this at the Classic this year. It's pretty awesome. So Brooks is wanting to show me to show you all these new swim baits from STC. I was trying to keep them secret. But uh, anyway... Uh, Ronnie, maybe try getting un, in under Sarah's name, and it's, I don't know, and see if I can do that, but we're, we're friends on Facebook, I don't know what's going on, so, uh, I do want to show y'all somebody special real quick, Neely, are you ready? Y'all are going to get to be the first people, uh, oh, Bassmaster Sarah, I just assumed it was your lovely wife, she seems cool anyway, alright, there we go. Let's see if I can get Sarah on under Ronnie's name. Ronnie under Sarah. Let's see what we got here. If it'll let me. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look. It still will not let me. Uh, I... What is going on? I cannot get Ronnie or Sarah on here. This thing is... That's the only problem about Facebook Live. It's very inconsistent, but... Look who I got right here. This is Neely. This is the bait girl. Hey, look, Neely. This is Neely. This is the newest addition to the Bateman family. Say hi. Say hi. Uh, Say hi. Cool. When I and she has been staring at me this whole time, wanting to know what is going on. But this is Neely, and I'm gonna let her join this week. I'm gonna show her on here. Look at this cute outfit she's got on. Oh yeah, just painted toenails. So she will be four months old in two weeks. Yeah. Well, all right, I think she stinks. We better get her out of here. She don't stink. She all right, guys, let's see. Just call him from your wife's phone and put it on speaker and it will work. I wish. I'm trying, I'm, I'm gonna keep trying right here. I don't know. Oh, there he is. All right, just send it in. Let's see if we can get him on camera right now. It says it's adding Ronnie Moore. Let's pray this works. What are you doing, dude? Ronnie, it's sending you an invite right now, buddy. <laughs> Connecting. Connecting. Hey. There he is. Ronnie Moore from Bassmaster Live is now on the show. Ronnie, I don't know what's going on, man. I've Back here sweating bullets. I think it was uh, I was on my computer and I was doing all my setting stuff on my phone and then it, so I just logged off the one on Facebook on my computer and uh, and just did it on my phone. But well, there it we changed go. settings Man. to public, but I, don't don't kill me with.
Yeah, just leave it to me. I knew I was going to botch something. It always happens. Brooks is trying to show you a swim bait. We used to call him swim bait. What is that? No. Say, this is swim bait. It's swim bait. I like it. Look at his hat. Do you like that? Do you like his green ALX rods hat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Ronnie, for I'll, I'll introduce you. If people don't know you, they should. If they watch Bass Live, they've got to see Ronnie Moore on there. And Ronnie was actually a former college angler for East, Eastern Carolina, yep. correct? Yep, for East Carolina. Uh, I fished for three years of my four. Um, I didn't fish my freshman year. I was working, trying to make some money, save some money. So I fished as much as I could my last three years, though. So, yep. Well, well uh it's amazing how big high school and college fishing has grown in the last two years. It's like quadruple. It, it is. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I'm just excited that I was a part of the college program. I'm just excited that I fished against Jordan Lee and Dustin Connell and some of those guys. I'm like, you know, I was right there with them. I saw how good they were then. And it kind of made you feel good that they uh, turned out to be as good as they are now. So, um what? Yeah, I actually got to room with uh, Dustin Connell at ICAST two years ago. Never met him in my life, and he was absolutely hilarious. Met him through Clint Davis, and he stayed with us. And all he basically says, man, I just want to catch a bass. That's all <laughs> I care about. I just want to catch a bass. And he did. I mean, he won a tournament his rookie year, and uh, Bassmaster Rookie of the Year. Uh, that's a really awesome story. Well, it's – it's cool because he's just one of 10 or one of a dozen, you know, there's 10% of the elite series are college alums. Now, um, obviously more elite series anglers went to college, but 10% you know, of the elite series field fished in college. So it's getting pretty big. It's getting pretty cool uh, that you can go from uh, fishing with your parents, you know, in the high school series as a boat captain, fishing a couple years in college, and then you either make the bracket and get exposure or you fish the opens and qualify. Uh, one of my groomsmen at my wedding, actually, Jake Whitaker, he uh, and the guy. he qualified two years fishing the opens. You know, he, he won the college championship a couple years and a couple years ago, and then he fished the opens, and two years later he's in the elite. So. It, it happens pretty quick. It's not lucky like people think. There's a lot of college guys who give it a try, but the, the real good ones, yeah, they, they make it quick. You, you tell me about your buddy Jake. Uh, make sure on this video you link his uh, uh, Facebook fishing page and all that stuff on here. Let's get him some follows. I know he's going to be an upcoming uh, uh, angler to watch it, on the late series. And It's tough, man. They're like, they're like gators out there for uh, the sharks. They're like sharks, the elite guys are, so. Every single rookie, whether even Wesley Strait or Shinfu Kai, you know, the guys who are classified as newcomers, the guys who are really experienced and really, really good proven anglers at the top level, they uh, they have an adjustment period for sure. You know, we see yeah. some of those guys doing really well, and then some years they need the last event of the year to qualify for the Classic. So it's not easy whether you've fished for 20 years of your life or you're, you're out of college. Yeah, it was always crazy when uh, the first year Brent Ayler was on the Lake Series – they would say the rookie Brent Hayler. I'm like, this dude, he won, he's won the Force Wood Cup, Toyota tournament. He's definitely not a rookie. But, we got that rule changed. Uh, he told me the competition is fierce. Yeah, we got that rule changed because of him. Um, but Jordan Lee didn't need another trophy on his shelf. He'll have plenty of it when it's all said and done. Yeah, that dude is <laughs> absolute hammer. It, long story short, when I first started TackleFreaks.com uh, this time last year, First order, first phone call was Jordan Lee. I won't say what he bought, but he said, man, I was in this store and bought these baits and wonder if y'all have them. I said, dude, today is launch day one, and we've got them. And so it was pretty cool to send out baits to the classic <laughs> champ. Um, one thing, uh, we got a, a pretty cool schedule on the Lake Series this year. I know my home lake, Kentucky Lake, is on there. Is there any tournaments we need to watch for potential big bags or a really – a back and forth, uh, you know, final days. What are some sleeper events uh, you're looking at, Ronnie? Well, I like the fact that Kentucky Lake is at a different time than we've ever came. You know, it's not going to necessarily maybe be that Tennessee River Lake tournament like we're expecting. It could, it could be a bush flipping deal. It could be a, you know, like a, you know, an early post spawn deal. You know, they're not. They might be out in bar. You know, probably the bars might factor some. You guys know all about that a lot more than I do, but. 
it, it should definitely be earlier and the fish should be um, it, they'll be different, you know, positioned differently. So that one's ex exciting for me. I think that Grand Lake could be really exciting. And those are back to back lakes, Grand Lake and Kentucky. But I think we start the year off with, with Martin. Martin's kind of an unknown for people because we haven't had bass mm -hmm. master events recently there. But the mix of large spotted bass and well, how do you open I, they could be late winter or it could be early pre-spawn depending on if they get a, a couple you know a couple days in a row of 50 to 60 degree weather and, and it doesn't drop down below freezing those fish can start to transition probably um so it might not be as cold or uh delayed in the winter process it could be it could be a shallow slug fest come sunday or, or come the final day of the tournament and with spotted bass and largemouth factoring in it, it will be like I wouldn't be surprised if half the top twelve had a shot to win past, you know. So uh, Martin should be a good one to start with, and then there's a couple. St. Lawrence is always a slugfest. It seems even, mm -hmm. even though we know what to expect, the fish are different places or different baits show up, and then uh, Lake Oahe in South Dakota should be fun. Uh, an unknown. It's to to me from what I've heard, it reminds me of like a Lake Mead because of how. Really? treacherous it can get wind wise because it is like down in those that colorado river like uh the va the up in the canyon so when that wind catches some of those canyon walls it'll it'll turn up and make it rough real quick but i think that that's uh with that no info rule i think that lake hawaii is definitely a mystery but that means it's wide open too so that's cool yeah that's what i like about the no info rule uh I know guys are going to say, oh, they all get help and all that. But I can tell you that there are guys that have told me, I love your show, but I can't watch it because I'm afraid if someone's going to talk <laughs> on there, I'm going to get busted with no info. And I think that's great. It puts everything on level on playing field. I'm going to go ahead and predict, Ronnie, uh, that the Elite Series event on Kentucky Lake is not one out deep. I think it can be one on a frog, believe it or not. Could be one on a frog, and it can be one shallow. Well, we there will there's always deep fish here, but that's a time of the year when a good sight fisherman uh, can really rack them up. I look for Steve Kennedy to do really, really well in that event. I wouldn't be surprised. I've I've covered uh, tournaments on Kentucky Lake. Probably I've covered probably like seven, and every year we have the high school championship there because it's such a big field and like, mm -hmm. can handle that big of a field. And every year it's won differently. Sometimes that one team busted it three days in a row on a frog and had for high schoolers. Here, some jerk bait in the middle of a pocket and caught smallmouth and won. And you know, offshore plays some. So it's really interesting uh, how even in the late summer, you know, early August, late July, how different ways you can compete and have a chance to win. So in early May. It's definitely going to be a uh, a fun event. I'm I'm excited just because there's so much water that people normally compete for on Kentucky Lake. That mm -hmm. This time around, it could be spread out a lot more. We'll see a lot more people instead of on the main lake, and you can drive down and see who's there, see who's where. There'll be a lot of people back up in river up as far as they can get in a creek, and uh, that'll be cool. So we'll see some. Uh, those well, I, and there's also the factor of. Lake Barkley. It's not that far from Paris. I've ran from Barkley to Paris. It's about a 35, actually, it's about a 45 minute run to the canal. But those guys aren't scared. And that time of year, man, Barkley can get really, really good because it's usually a week or two behind Kentucky. And those fish are maybe farther along in the, in the, the spawn or locked down. Those fish on Barkley could be really biting. And, and the water level is going to play a lot in water color in that event. So. That's just my opinion. A uh, couple more things before uh, I get on with the show and talk about jerk baits. Uh, I know you got the ALX rods hat on. Uh, tell us a little bit about your partnership with ALX. I know Alex is a great, great guy and builds awesome rods. Well, I'm I'm waiting for you to put in your order to uh to to get a couple in your shop for one. But no, it, it's cool. I uh, I have a couple mutual friends with Alex. Uh, actually, a couple met you know, that I met in college and Trent Palmer's one of them. I got, I've always fished whenever I go to Georgia, I'll fish with him. And so I've always used a couple of the rods, you know, given certain techniques, you know, if we're throwing an underspin, he's got a couple rigged up, I'll grab it and, and fish with it. And so, uh, but to, to talk to Alex, see how 
savvy he was with social media and see where his mind was going forward as kind of a smaller business or a smaller company in, in such a big industry. Uh, I think that I, I really enjoyed talking to him before we even met each other. And so I knew his head was in the right direction uh, going forward. You know, marketing standpoint, he's, what's good is that because it's relatively new, because he is going full bore into it, he's not tied up with what used to work 20 years ago. And that's some industry yeah. people advertising-wise. He is, you know, progressive. He's thinking about what could happen in the future. He's up with the social media. And I think that, uh, you know, He's got he's got a lot of great rod lines. I've, I've got a couple sitting right over here against the wall. I brought them in from the boat, and and whether it's the hundred and fifty dollar price point or hundred hundred to one hundred fifty dollar price point rods, or it's the three hundred dollar Kelly J jerk bait rod, they're all uh, assembled in the same place in the warehouse in uh, South Carolina. And uh, what's neat is there's a couple blanks. Or he's already got one blank the Zolo line that has the stamp of approval made in America, that the blanks, everything assembled on them, they're manufactured, everything is in America, which is cool. And then a couple of the other lines, the blanks uh, aren't from America, but everything is still made. Um, it has to go through his hands, and as a owner of a company, you still have that much cut on your product. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I call myself the bait man. It's kind of a joke, but Alex is like, the rod guy he is an absolute guru uh, he'll be telling me stuff about what's on his rods and what kind of thread and type of guides i'm like dude as long as they're nice and they don't fray my line i'm all for it buddy but he makes great rods i've got to play with them and you're right i do need to drop an order well, and get them up on tackle free all your kentucky lake guys they probably like throwing the big spoons they like throwing the big swim baits they like throwing the big crank baits and Parker mm -hmm. is one of the dudes who does it best, and he created specific rods with them. It's like a, a obvious choice, especially for that lake and where you're positioned. But what I think I think's cool is that this is show season. You see all the pros going to expos, doing seminars and stuff. That mm -hmm. means industry people have to do it as well. And it was cool getting a text from him the other day. They had driven back from a Raleigh expo, and then Monday – it ended Sunday evening. Monday he was – rolling a hundred and something rods on the dryer Jeez. that he had like just gotten done to dry for the next show this week in Richmond. So it's definitely cool to see a smaller business model expand into such a, a big industry and getting bigger by the day. It's pretty cool. And so I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of it because he, he sees the value of social media going forward. He sees the marketing, advertising and where it's going. And uh, that's where I can be valuable and that's, you know, I just want to fish more. As much as I love bass fishing, I love covering the sport. But, man, I've got a beautiful boat sitting out there, and it's been 12 degrees. I want to go as fishing as much as possible. So uh, the fact that it's well, making me up with rods now, it's cool. I always say if you want to make it big in the bass fishing industry, you won't be bass fishing much. <laughs> I probably fished last, last, last year. Than any. I got to get back in shape, man. I used to have a beautiful slender figure. I, I don't know why my beautiful wife's still with me. But. <laughs> Same Ronnie, uh, I'm going to move on with the show, and I, I, uh, you have a fantasy fishing group as yeah. well called Beat Ronnie Moore, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, just because I can't win anything with fantasy fishing, I do write columns that come out for each event. We do a podcast about where our picks are, and I'm completely transparent. Who I write in my story is who I put on my team, so you don't have to worry about me switching at the last second. So I did create a group. There may be some prizes involved at some point, but I did it just for fun, just for – friends who want to trash talk but i created a group on bassmasterfantasy.com it's called beat ronnie moore it's a private group and the password for it is beat ronnie moore um capital letters for each of the each of the words beat ronnie moore you know three capitals so um join in and if you can't join in send me a message on instagram or something ronnie moore bass if you can't get in i'll i'll copy and paste it for you so one last thing before I get off, and I was texted by Mr. Mark Zoner, my, my friend. I know one of your friends. He asked me, are you going to be prepared dress code-wise for the Elite Series this year versus when you showed up to fish with him up north? <laughs> well, let's just say a quick story about that. I got out up – I went up to Michigan in the fall, and what I know from the Great Lakes – region whether it's new york or 
Michigan is that it could be beautiful today and it's the worst weather in the world tomorrow and then vice versa. So I went to Michigan and had a couple rain jackets that I didn't trust necessarily and then a couple that would keep me warm but not dry. So we got out to the lake and there was like pretty decent sized waves hitting the dock as we and we're the only boat dumb enough to go out there at that moment. And I'm standing on the dock with my camera gear all in its protective case and I'm not I'm not in protective gear at all and I'm like this could be the worst yeah. day of my life. And then we go out there and, and catch them really good. Uh, not a huge bag, but a lot, of, a lot of fish. And I caught a triple on us on an A-rig and had four on at one point. So it turned into be one of the best days of my life because Zona offered me a rain jacket to wear. He had an extra Carhartt rain jacket. I put it on and wore it and caught a triple. And so I'm indebted to Z-Train, but I enjoy it. The Z the Z train is awesome. He he texts me so randomly. I'm hoping I can get him to come fish Lake X with me. Um, but Ronnie, it's time for me to do my thing and talk about some jerk. Do baits. it anytime you want to come on here. You just let me know now that we got it figured I'm out. I'm not the jerk bait guy, so I'll be watching and listening. All right. Thanks so much for joining, Ronnie. Have a good Thank night. You, all right, guys, we got to work. Do me a favor, share that video. Now that Ronnie Moore was able to join, you can now share it, and people can watch that. I hope you all enjoyed that. Ronnie's a really good dude to come up from the college ranks, and uh, we've gotten to have a little bit of friendship. So let's talk about jerk baits. You see this hat, the Mega Bass hat. I figured I'd wear it tonight. I've won a lot of money in this hat. It's on my personal profile picture of me and Jeff if you broke this thing in. So let's start with jerk baits and let's start with mega bass. Let me grab one here. So there are several different types and the ones I carry are the ones that are the most popular. This is the mega bass vision 110 plus one. I get the question all the time. What's the difference between the regular mega bass? And the plus one, the plus one, all it has is a bigger lip. Did Steve Kennedy not win a major term on Kentucky Lake sometime a while back? Steve Kennedy has won on FLW Tour twice on Kentucky Lake. He's a hammer. So that's the 110 plus one. This color is uh, GP Pro Blue 2, or actually has the orange belly, GP Pro Blue orange belly. Uh, these are super popular. This is the deeper version 110 that goes deeper. Uh, all Mega Bass come with these super, super sharp, uh, they call it a Katsage or Katsage hook. I can't pronounce it because it's Japanese. You see these ball bearings in here? This is what makes these things cast really, really good. See, that's the weight transfer system. So you can hum these uh, out really, really far. Uh, Craig, actually, I don't have a big stock. This comes from my personal collection. I've got two plus ones left. Uh, and these two are on the side, I think. If not, I'll fix it tomorrow. Um, but Mega Bass has really, really good, custom, almost custom-like paint jobs. And that's one thing they're really famous for. The other part, and I'm going to get out of normal vision, is they suspend absolutely perfect out of the package. So, let me find one. Brooks may have taken it. Now here's the new Mega Bass Silent. So this is this is the normal size Vision 110. If you have, I showed this last week. This color is Ito Wakasaki. It's uh, it's almost it's a little transparent on the bottom. Uh, it's got a golden back, a little purple, but it's got some chrome to it. This is a sick, sick color. Uh, but this is the silent one. You see, you don't have that weight transfer system. Ah, I got my... That's how sharp them hooks are. Uh, there's no weight transfer system up here. Uh, they've put all the weighting forward in here. So, number one, it's going to make that bait suspend straight down, and it will still cast very easily, but it has no rattles. And this is the most... God, these are super sharp hooks. Um... If you're going to change hooks out on this Mega Bass, and I suggest you don't, uh, if you're going to do it, I'll go with these right here. This is the Gamakatsu G Finesse treble hook. It is a very light weight hook. It's super, super sharp. 
Correct, Caitlin. This is the lure that Scott Martin won on Lake Cumberland. Uh, except he was using GP Pro Blue. Um, these are super, super sharp, but they don't weigh a lot, so they're not going to hinder the action of this bait. Um, that's the G Finesse treble. These are light wire hooks, but you throw, I throw this bait on eight pound line in a set six and a half to seven foot medium, medium light action bait caster. Uh, always go through fluorocarbon. What makes these the top tier jerk bait is it's going to dart back and forth and turn sideways, but when you stop this bait, it stops. I mean, it's a dead stop. It doesn't slowly rise. It doesn't slowly sink. It's dead stop. And that is absolute killer. I probably work this bait a little faster than most guys. I'll jerk, jerk, pause, count to about four. Jerk, jerk, pause, count to about four. Or always look for a cadence. I've actually had better alert working these faster with a dead stop than just a jerk jerk and then pause for 10 seconds i do a lot better on about a three four second pause if that these are the best i've seen in water temperature from 52 degrees below once it gets above 52 to 55 i really start like going with a rogue or something i can move even faster but that is the mega bass vision 110 have i had more luck with the clear or yellow color jerk bait i stick to shad patterns I really love stuff like this, which is Ito Wakasaki, uh, Deadly Black Shad, Mega Bass Sexy Shad. I just caught one almost nine a few uh, a month ago on that. Uh, I do like chartreuse and purple when the water's got a little color or if I'm really wanting to target some smallmouth. Uh, really like those. But one thing again, be very careful on the hooks you use uh, to change on your Mega Bass. They will affect the action. Do not go too heavy. Uh, that's a good recommendation, Christopher, the VMC, Reverse Barbarian. That's a good one, but hopefully I can get some more cot sage hooks for these. Let's talk about another jerk bait that's super, super popular right now. Uh, it's a suspending jerk bait, but it, uh, do they have a perch color? Yes, Leo, they do. I don't have any in stock, but there is some perch color. There's a new uh, chartreuse black back on there. Yes, I have thrown the rearrange Tommy Blakely, and that's what I've got in my hand right now. If you guys haven't seen this, this is the new Jackal rearrange. Uh, this is the 130 size. It's a really big bait, 130, 130 millimeters. It's loud. It's got, uh, it's definitely a lot louder than a Mega Bass. You can hear it like that. Oh, God, I'm stuck. It's got super sharp hooks, too. Uh, that color is called Silver Shad, I believe. Yeah, HL Silver Shad. Don't have the best light tonight, so this one is really, really good. What I like about the rear range, one, it'll stop on a dime, but this bait really slashes back and forth, big time slash. And Vision 110 suspends. Uh, it shouldn't be a slow floater. They, they make a slow float for Vision 110, but the normal... Uh, spins but uh, the rear range is meant to work fast the faster you can work this jerk bait the better really great in the fall this one's really good uh, late winter transitioning into spring um, these have been selling really really well uh, they're actually pretty hard to get in stock uh, the 110 rear range let's see if I got one I'll show you a comparison yeah. so this is the 110 rear range same size as be really careful, Brooks. I'm telling you. So this is the 110 size free range. This is a sweet color too. This is uh, hollow minnow. I may not even add these on tackle for each. Uh, how deep do I recommend it to dive? The 110 goes about six foot, if that. Um, or 130 goes about six foot. I fish these baits anywhere between uh, six and 15 feet deep. You're fishing for suspended bass, not bass laying on the bottom. So there's the 110 rearrange, range and there's the 130, so you can tell the size difference. If you work deeper banks in early spring with the jerk bait, uh, yes. I also fish out on the flats on the main lake quite a bit. Uh, David, that's a great question. Any of those transitional uh, areas, that's where I like to throw a jerk bait. 
Uh, also works really great as it warms up onto the spawning flats in the bay. Uh, parallel and riprap. Uh, that's a trick old Mark Menendez has told me. And if there's current row on any place, there's any kind of eddies. But you're really targeting suspended fish this time of year and in the spring. And then you'll, you'll get those more aggressive fish uh, as the water warms up with the faster moving jerk baits. But that's the rearranged 110 and the 130 from Jackal. Good price on these baits. Really quality components. $14.99. What are you doing? I don't need those right now. Don't put them back in the box. Come over here. Brooks is making a mess, guys. Let's see what else I've got in here. Uh, this is a deadly bait. Not talked about a lot in the jerk bait world. And it's won some money. This is going to be the I'm a Flip. And Michael Murphy made these things really, really popular. And uh, if y'all know Dan Grimes that used to work for FLW that works with me at Kentucky Lake Outdoors, he said this is the best jerk bait on the market. Uh, a very slender jerk bait. Uh, it's got some real loud rattles to it. Uh, this is made by Ima, and this is the Flip. I don't think I have these on the website, uh, but I can put them on. I'm going to have to take some pictures because uh, Ima didn't have any. This is the 120 size. Uh, this is an awesome jerk bait. It's got some really good sharp hooks on it. They make a lot of really natural colors. Uh, this one suspends really, really good out of the package. You're not going to have to do anything to it. Um, also works really good when you rip it. Uh, instead of like a jerk, jerk, just a hard rip, it'll really and stop. So I really like that I'm a flip. Very popular bait, especially out west. Um, very popular on Hartwell, those blueback herring lakes. Uh, the Ima Flit is a really, really good bait. That's the 120. They got a couple of different sizes as well. Let's move on here. See what else we got in the jerk bait world. Now, you know we can't talk about jerk baits without talking about the OLC. And I'm actually going to open this package. This is uh, this bait right here. Actually, started the jerk bait. Japanese Revolution, and that is the Lucky Craft Pointer 100 SP. Uh, when these first hit the United States, people said, oh man, I'm not going to pay that much money for a bait. Uh, and guess what? They paid, and they paid a lot. And then people started paying attention to Mega Bass. What's up, Eric? Uh, this, is the, this is the famous, the, the Pointer 100. Uh, suspense, really good, right out of the package. I like this bait. Uh, any, when the water is about 55 degrees. I like the 100 DD, the deeper one, when it's colder and you got to get farther down. Um, that's American Shad, Gizzard Imitator. You cannot go wrong with that color right there. I don't care where if it's really clear water or got some dirty water. What is the difference from a KVD and a Mega Bass as an action? Uh, about $25. And... Uh, the KVD is a great jerk bait, but it's more, it has more rolling to it, whereas the Mega Bass is more of a turn and twitch. Uh, you'd have to see it in a tank. Uh, it's really hard for me to explain, but the KVD jerk bait is good, and I'll be showing you that soon. But that's the Lucky Craft Pointer 100. Great bait. That bait right there really got me into jerk bait fishing, the newer style stuff. Uh, I put down my Smithwick Rogues because of this bait right here. And, you know, I was about 16 when these first got popular. I was able to actually work for Lucky Craft for a couple years indirectly by doing classic patterns. And I wish I would have bought all Mike Otten's Lucky Craft when he sold them all. He had so many. I do have some colors in these things that you, that are like prototype colors at my dad's house. I'd love to show you guys. But that's American Shad. I really recommend Aurora Black. Uh, Aurora Black's a good color. Uh, this is the Stacy. And I'll take this one out of the package as well. I'm going to have to glue some packages back together tomorrow. That right there is the Lucky Craft Stacy. And if you'll see, this is the 90 SP. One of my favorite colors, Table Rock Shad. It has a deep build to it. Almost like a, what I call a spoon style bill. And you can crate this thing really deep. I believe it goes down to, it says suspending at 6 to 8 feet. Well, if you throw an eight-pound line, you get this bait down to about 10, and it will just sit there. I know guys that literally almost fish these like crankbaits. They throw them down, and they crank it deep and just stop. David, unfortunately, my dad doesn't get to fish as much as he used to. He had a really bad stroke about 10 years ago. Um, he still fishes off the bank. 
uh, very limited in his mobility, and he's got to have somebody with him because if he was, was to fall in, um, it would be bad. He, he even wears his life jacket off the bank. So, But my dad taught me a lot. My dad was a pretty much guru, but he was a plastic worm guy. When I bust out things like this, he was just going crazy. But that's the Stacy. This is a definitely big-time killer on Clearwater Lakes and when it's really, really cold. Really recommend this bait. I even like this color. This is a Table Rock Bull Shoals. Uh, Mississippi guys, Pickwick guys love this Stacy 90. Uh, Mike Alton took me fishing one day and blistered me on this thing. And he was basically throwing it down, cranking it, and just a really light twitch and just letting it kind of sit there. And they would just gobble this thing up. If you can graph them, and you can graph them in 12 feet, 14 feet, and you can get that Stacy in front of them, you'll catch them. Uh, yes, I do still like rogues. I like a rogue a lot when the water is almost at that 60 degree mark. And I actually like the floating ones, believe it or not. Yes, I do, Mark. I reel them down to the death I want to start at, and then I'll start my retrieve. I've always had be better luck at that. Uh, now, if I'm fishing like a flat or something like that, that's relatively shallow, five, six feet deep, you know, I'll just make a couple quick cranks and go in to my presentation. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, all right, we were just talking about the uh, KVD jerk bait. This is the normal version. I got all kinds of jerk baits in here. This is the normal KVD jerk bait. But this one right here is my favorite because I catch a lot of fish on it. There's the J300 Deep KVD jerk bait. Really good for the price, $8.99. Um, I'll have these on tacklefreaks.com tomorrow. This is my favorite color in it. Believe it or not, it's the chrome blue one. I have actually caught several fish on this. This is a great bait. Suspends really good. Has a little bit of a slow sink to it, I've noticed. Um, got pretty good stock hooks. Several great colors. I really make I like chrome blue, strobe shad, and apple shad is really good. But this goes down to, I believe, six to eight feet, and it'll get there. I've even got rough spots in the bill where I could bottom on this. Really like this on the deep points transition baits. Uh, that's chrome blue. It's actually a very quality jerk bait for eight ninety nine. I, I think uh, Strike King, King did really good. You can hear it's got some rattles in it. It's got a weight transfer system in it. See if you can hear this. This thing will cast like a bullet. So, if you're not sure what to buy, you got ten bucks. You can't go wrong with the J300. And this is the deep one. Uh, there's a shallower one. Uh, I'll have them up tomorrow on the website, along with almost all these jerk baits. So, if you'll give me a day, I'll load these jerk baits on there. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to be at the store much because of all the snow. Do you still use 8 to 10 pound test even if you're fishing over a heavy submerged hydrilla beds or do you go up in line test? We don't have a lot of hydrilla here, actually none, and don't have a lot of, you know, standing stuff. But if I was fishing over grass, I would go with a braid to fluorocarbon combination. I would do like a 16 pound braided line, 16 to 20 pound braid to like 10 pound fluoro sure Matt Allen and uh, Tim Little could back me up on that. Uh, that's a good question, uh, Todd. I personally would probably go to 10-pound fluoro, uh, but if you're really worried about it, I would put braid to fluorocarbon later on that. Uh, duo or mega bass, one better than the other and why? I personally like mega bass. Uh, I've not thrown the duo that much, so I can't answer your question 100% honestly. Um, but I'm a Mega Bass fan. Uh, I love their stuff. I love the paint jobs. Uh, one thing that I can just tell you straight up is Duo doesn't have the color selection that Mega Bass does. That doesn't mean they don't make as good as bait. So I can't be honest with answering that question other than just giving you a personal uh, opinion. So let's move on. But that's a good question. If you can't afford a Mega Bass, get the next best thing. Uh, this is the Lucky Strike RC STX, uh, which I call the Rick Stick. Uh, Mark uh, must have colors for the Tennessee River. Uh, Ito, Tennessee uh, Ito, 
Skeleton Tennessee, Pro Blue, French Pearl, Ito Wakasaki, and anything with purple in it. Uh, Deadly Black Shad. Uh, the clearer the water, the clearer the bait. Uh, the more stained the water, go with your chartreuses and what so. I see Terry Bolton's on here, who's an excellent jerkbait fisherman. I'm sure somebody's been like, hey, Terry, you need to get on there and correct him. Tell him how to throw that jerkbait. But I got one Terry's going to like here in just a second. This is the uh, Lucky Strike RCSTX. Uh, this is basically a copy of a Mega Bass. It's, it's not made with near as much craftsmanship, and it'll work good. It doesn't suspend. It doesn't have the perfect action, but you know what? Uh, these are actually pretty good, and I sell lots of these things, um, and they're not bad at all. Uh, for 7 bucks. if you don't want, you can get three for what you can, one mega bass, and I know guys that catch the fire out of them on this thing right here. So got several colors, and that's their kind of table rock color. Just want to throw that in there. I see lots of guys talking about price, and I will say jerk baits are expensive for some reason. People like them, they like to collect them, and they like to throw it. Correct, Nate. I know there is a few quality issues that go in with the RCSTX. Uh, that's why they're $7.99 or whatnot. One of the best selling jerk baits, and y'all can thank Terry Bolton for this, is this right here. This is the Rapala Shadow Wrap, and this thing will catch them. There's two versions. There's a shallow and there's a deep one. Uh, this is this right here is the shallow one. Um, all you gotta do is get on Wired to Fish and look up Terry Bolton Shadow Wrap, and you're gonna see him go to town on these things. I know him and Jason have done really well on this bait right here. Uh, this color is Albino Shiner which is a really sweet color. It's almost like a French pearl with a little blue belly. You got some silver in it. Uh, these, uh, these big smallmouth really like that. If I was to throw a braid on it, would you go with the floral leader straight bait? Floral leader on the jerk baits. Don't want any braid on there. That's just me. Um, but the shadow wrap come out about three years ago, and it has just turned into a killer up here. Uh, I've sent these things everywhere. Got to get these on the website tomorrow. Uh, but what's really cool is this thing, it doesn't kind of do, do this. It literally turns 180 degrees. So it's when you're jerking back and forth, it's tails darting left and right 180 degrees. Uh, really like this Shadow Wrap. Just a great, great bait. Several great colors. I like this color, Mossback Shiner. Uh, I like their clown color. Really, really good. Just get on wire to fish. Go look up Terry Bolton fishing this thing. I'm not going to preach to the choir. Watch the video. You'll see what it'll do. Um, what else do we got before I have to wrap this thing up? I've been on for almost an hour. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay. This is, if you haven't seen this before, this is a new uh, bait from Berkeley, and the giveaway tonight is going to feature one of these new baits, uh, thanks to Angler Hub. This is the Berkeley Juke, and this is kind of like a half glide bait, half jerk bait. I'll get you out eventually. Uh, how do you like the rip stop? Uh, Leo, I use the rip stop. Uh, more in the summer. Uh, Terry Bolton told me it's, he, he really likes it for schooling fish. Um, Brian, we're coming up, buddy. We've got to get there. This is the Berkeley Juke. This is a color I designed with my buddy Mike Russell, who does all the uh, paint jobs for them. This is uh, Purple Glimmer. And this thing is awesome. It's kind of like old big AC Shiner. Uh, Justin Lucas helped design this thing. I see that purple in there. That's just, just that's just sexy now. Oh, oh, purple. These are on tacklefreaks.com. Um, got some other colors in there, but this is to imitate those big skipjack in the spring. Uh, it really goes wild. It's got a really good dart in action. Uh, you can also run your rod tip up like 45 degrees and slow roll, and this thing it just kind of wakes back and forth, back and forth. Hence the name, the juke. So, let me put this one back in a package. 
on my table. And then there's the Berkeley Cutter 110, which is a great bait. And it's priced very, very well at $6.99. And there's the same color, Purple Glimmer. You know, Berkeley's stealing, stealing my ideas there. They, they said, man, that color that Bateman likes, that looks good. And uh, Berkeley's actually telling me the walleye guys love this color. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. But um, Mike at Bag 5 Baits designs all the Berkeley colors with help from the pros and help from the bait man every now and then. So that's the Cutter 110 Plus. It gets down there uh, probably in that uh, three, it's a three to six foot, realistically a four to six foot diving. Uh, this has got some insane action right here. Juke will jack them direct to the live well. That is awesome. So Harold had some experience. What other Berkeley baits are available in that color? Uh, the Bad Shad is. Uh, the Juke and the Cutter 110 is what's available in Purple Glimmer. I don't think they make it in anything else right now. Are the open ones discounted? No, Brandon, believe it or not, I'll seal these packages up because the only time I use them is on the show, and I'll put them back on the shelf. Most people won't ever know. Because of, so let me go back in. And I open them all the time at the store to show guys about baits. Uh, but yeah, if anybody wants to buy them all, I'll make you a great deal tonight. You just got to buy every jerk bait I put up here, including my personal ones. So that is the Berkeley Cutter 110 Plus. Spro, right here, the Mick Stick. There's two main ones. This is the Mick Rip 85. I'm going to show you this right here. This is a really deep diving jerk bait. Um, I've never thrown it, but I can tell you I've been selling a lot of these things. Uh, this gets down to the 8, 10 foot range. Very small profile jerk bait. Uh, the Grand Lake guys, the Table Rock guys, uh, deep clear impoundments. Those guys really like this McRip 85. Uh, it suspends and it gets down really, really deep. And the good thing about uh, Spro is, you know, it's got really quality components from the trebles to the split rings. Everything on here is made real. Great customer service, too. If you ever have an issue with one of their baits, send them a message and they'll take care of you. But that's the McRip 85 designed for deep down jerk baiting. And then there's the Mike McClellan Signature Series Mixed Stick, and I love this color. This is like the old Norman Flake crank bait. As a matter of fact, they call this Norman Flake. You know, I love me some purple. And if y'all see them gizzard shed this time of year, they've always got some gray and purple on them. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here. My wife's mad. She's ready to cook supper. You're cooking really Oh, never mind. I'm cooking supper. So that's the Norman Flake mixed stick. It is a good jerk bait. It's in that $14 range. You know, it's got a very similar design to, you know, the Mega Bass. Uh, they don't make as many clear colors. It does have a weight transfer system. Uh, it's really loud. It's got some bigger uh, weight in it. Casts really good, very durable bait. And they suspend well. This dives three to five feet. Uh, very sharp treble hooks. Love the mixed stick. That is Norman Flake. If I haven't added those online, I will tomorrow. So y'all have something to do this week, and you'll have to get on Tackle Freaks and look at all the new uh, jerk baits I've added up. Send me an order, and I'll ship them out to you Monday. That's how it works. And if you can't wait, I guess order. You can make multiple orders. I'll ship a little bit tomorrow and ship more next week. Uh, don't forget my code Bateman to save you 10% uh, on some of these, which you can't really. 10% on these. Uh, no, I don't have any secret great, Zach. I wish I did. Uh, they're currently out of stock right now. I looked at the Mega Bass uh, stock report uh, just the other day. Ooh, I've got a mask on. So let's, uh, I'm stuck. Let's wrap this up pretty quick. Uh, another good hook you guys can use. This is the new Owner STX treble hooks. These are a very lightweight hook. Super, super sharp here. Um, I like these size number threes. I'm a jerk bait. And let's go old school really quickly. You cannot forget about my boy, old Smithwick Rogue. Show you some Smithwick Rogues right here. 
that's almost like a pro blue. This one's always been really good for me um, on Kentucky Lake. And this one right here. This one got really, really famous uh, when the Japanese guy won. I forgot his name in the early 90s. That's when we found out we had smallmouth because the Japanese guys and everybody blistered them on Kentucky Lake on these two baits right here. Now, this is the Smithwick Rattling Rogue, and this is just the uh, normal suspended rogue, so they say. What I always did on my rogues, and see if I can find one that I've got it done to in this box. I may not. As you can see, this has got a little suspend strip. You always got to suspend these things. Uh, even the suspended ones will rise. What I recommend is running some cold water uh, in a bucket and then applying your strips to see how it goes. Yeah, I know. Got a frog on here. I wish they had, I had a mega bass jerk bait shirt, but I don't. But that's the old rogue, and I really like this bait. But when it's super cold, I'm leading to a mega bass. Um, 55 to 60 degrees is my favorite on the rogue. Even like it's 63, 64 degree um, water temperature, I like the rogue, and it doesn't have to be suspended when it's that warm. Uh, I've got a bunch of, I've got some crazy ones. I got a, I got a. This is this is a custom painted root beer rogue. It's a super shallow one. I actually use this more as a wake bait. Uh, and that's what's really cool about these really shallow ones. You can send that bill down and you can make them wake on top of the water. Uh, what else I got in here? Now here's one for you. They don't even make this anymore. This is the Excalibur uh, Mark Sosen Long A. Uh, this is really awesome. Uh, I like to, these are, these are Okeechobee jerk baits, guys down there at uh, Florida love these things, uh, for fishing really fast above the hydrilla and stuff. These are good jerk baits right here. You got awesome hooks on them. Those old Excalibur hooks are lethal sharp, uh, and I'll show you what they look like. Here's an old Rogue I've had painted up a long time ago. This is play off a of Norman color, but those hooks are made and they turn out by Excalibur and they are hard, hard to find. No jig show next week, Aaron, unfortunately. But that is going to be wrap it up because I've got to, whoo, I've got to cook some dinner. Hey, Brooks, you want to say bye? Brooks does not want to talk anymore. So I've got to, Brooks, come up here and tell everybody bye. bye. So me and Brooks, you got to get over here. Look, look how much this guy's grown. Bye. Oh, look at that shirt. So, guys, we really appreciate you joining tonight. Thank you so much, Ronnie Moore. Uh, you'll see me post more about the Ronald McDonald Charity House. Um, really looking forward to that. And uh, we'll do something cool next week, maybe get another guest on. I'm not going to do a jig show. I'm thinking about doing underspins and other baits. So let's do, so we'll probably do underspins. I really need to do a lipless crankbait show as well. So guys, if you haven't also, make sure you watch those YouTube videos. It really helps me out and subscribe to the channel. Um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, no smoke alarm went off. I'm going to download this video and upload it to YouTube. By the way, I'm putting a giveaway up before I do that, so make sure you like and share the giveaway when you have $50 prize pack courtesy of Angler Hub. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a good night. Bateman is signing out.